Now imagine you're playing a game. You're playing a game against me. I've got one triad left. My retaliator's down. I'm out of ammo. And all of a sudden you're crawling down the hallway and this happens. You're out. You're gone. You lost. How could it happen? He only had a triad. He hit me with the little bastard. That's what happened. This gun is not just a little bastard who it hits. It's also a little bastard who whoever fires it. Because there's so many things you got to look at. It's made of the same engine that the Holy Triad is made of, which is the 8K Retaliator Spring from Black Town Tool, the version 1 spring. But unlike this one, which shares uh, three dots, the Holy Triad gets a solid mahogany door that way. This is one inch here, this is one and a half inch here. Standard, okay, door uh, size. Watch this. Watch. Listen to it. Wow! Did you hear that thunder? Dart flew all the way back here. And then let's let's try the door right by you, which is also the same door. Ooh. It's brutal, but it's one shot. Ever since I heard of the triad, I just had to build one that was three. I knew they would probably have the range of a Raven and maybe a rocket launcher if I did it right, because I calculated the area of uh, how much air you have. Well, sure enough, I was perfectly right. It has to be the, the, the little bastard has the range of one of these. This is a Titan AS-1 rocket, okay? And it has two things in common. One range, and two, in most games, this is a one-hit weapon. Well, if you hit that, you hit somebody with that, it will also be a, a one-hit weapon, except you have a disadvantage. This is a high-maintenance weapon. How so? First off, try getting the damn back block off. Oh my gosh, I had the biggest trouble with it in the world. Um, the back block is so hard to take off that it literally destroyed the back of the gun and I had to rebuild this whole thing, okay? Um, what, you, what you don't know is this is not empty space back here and, there, and, the, and the restrictors are not pinned to this back. There is another chassis assembled inside of it. I'll show you in another video where it is actually holding the springs and valves in place. It is quite a brilliant system, by the way, um, because your air restrictors are no longer just restrictors, they are also valves. And they have a valve lock assembly. It's much like a, um, a, 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 a valve cam on, on, on a car, okay? And they, pour, if this one, they basically say, if this one's full, this fires, the other two are closed. If this one's empty, this fires. The other two are closed. This one, these two are empty. This one fires. This are closed. Brilliant, brilliant. I think the person who designed this should win a Nobel Prize. This is my best favorite pack of weapon in the world. Okay, so they really made it hard to take this off because not only is this back plate glued to this outside, it is also glued to the inside, and internally it is actually screwed to this whole chassis. So not only is there a screw on this front, there is a screw in the back. They want to make this gun as hard to mod, and for good reason, because once you do have a triple, you stand really good chance of all three of them not firing. You stand really good chance of breaking it. You stand really good chance of not getting it right. Even if you have it right, if you use, let's say, uh, two uh, looser darts and one tight dart, the tight dart will either go slower way slow, like it'll f just basically drop in front of you out of the barrel, or it won't go out of there at all, and you'll only shoot two. Number two, now you must have all three in here. You cannot just have one. And number three, you have to make sure the distances of all three dots are exactly the same in reference to a normal triad that has the backstop on it. You could put a backstop on it, but there. The other problem is you have to take this block out. You cannot keep it. You have to take this block out. And the problem with that is is you have all this empty space. What I did is I built a wall from back here up here, and then I sealed it. I put a, a damper behind it so it can never get all back here, and then I closed this up. Why is this tape? It's still a prototype. It'll probably be glued with epoxy all back here once it works, but I have to figure out the proper volume in here. But it is doing exactly what I want it to do. Si uh, about 50, 60 feet, all three out, and it's basically a close range Derringer type weapon. That just takes everybody out. Um, it is a very, very uh, good gun, but I highly recommend don't try building one.
don't try to build one. There's no way to distribute it perfectly. There's no way that all three are going to fire exactly the same distance unless you have perfect arcs that are exactly matched. Um, they don't spread out like the rough cut. That I'm, I'm happy about. I can tell you why that is. If you take all this off, all these crowns are perfectly symmetrical, and that means the gas flow is going to be even and concentric as the darts fly out the gun. That's good. Um, it makes it a little easier for somebody like me to do it. Um, do I think brass barrels would help? Yeah, if you can build three perfectly aligned black brass barrels. This gun, I had one that I had built, I actually gave it away to somebody else, um, that I took some uh, 1730 seconds um, brass tube and I pushed it in there all the way to where the stop was in the back. I used a red uh, laser sight to tell where the brass barrels are to make sure they're perfect and I filed each side perfectly. I then took this and crown this no good. What was the problem? The problem was, if I used the 8 kilogram spring, the dots just fluttered. If I took out the back, the back spoke and I threw a bunch of Stefans in there, yeah, that'd be great. Except that I mod my guns to shoot standard darts. And, um, basically, I didn't, uh, I didn't like the result. But it's still, 5 kilograms, it did as good as a holy triad. Except I know we can do better, a lot better. So, um... Basically, where have I been? This is the end of my testing, except for maybe randomly shooting things, maybe some squirrels, maybe some bugs, maybe this door again. Don't know. I have been working on a, on a couple of projects, a uh, screenplay for a, a movie that I came up with long ago called The Future is Murder. Maybe you've seen that saying on my blogs or on, or on my Facebook, The Future is Murder. It is a reference to a screenplay I'm writing about a very dystopian future where people are basically pushed away and living in VW, uh, you know, buses and doing jobs and this and that, and the only way to get ahead is to do some very evil stuff. Well, that's this movie. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a very good film. Um, it even has people like Robert Blake uh, basically being like, for example, a true romance where he's always saw Elvis, Christian Slater's character, always being talked about Elvis. Well, in this movie, it's the CEO who's being like coerced by this guy. And I want Robert Blake, because Robert Blake was, in fact, the evil character in the movie Lost Highway. And so I want it to be sort of my carry of that in the future, about 15 years in the future. It's, it, and, and basically, you got somebody that the CEO sent of a terrible crime, and this one guy can finger him, and this guy works for the CEO. Well, he, he, he goes to the guy, his lawyer happens to be at this pier where this incident happens, and says, all right, I won't testify against your son if you guys give me a bigger job. Well, he ends up biting off more than he can chew and gets involved in a very terrible scheme where he gets very curious and starts looking into this, um, this scheme. This movie is based off the idea of stem cell research and the evil things they do to get stem cells, where they say they can artificially produce them, is astounding. This is 10 to 15 years in the future, and corporations get more powerful. Some corporations even threaten that they have nuclear weapons, and some are even inferred that they may have them. They have lawyers, they have politicians, all sorts of stuff, people. At your local, let's say for example, Ralph's, Let's say you work for these multi-conglomerate companies. There's basically six or seven conglomerates, or as Japan would say, Koitsus, where, let's say you decide to buy a bunch of Gillette uh, Raiders, okay? Well, let's say your company, your parent company, actually owns Norelco instead of Gillette, and you buy all Gillette. Or maybe your company owns Pepsi-Cola and not Coca-Cola, and you're buying all Coca-Cola. Well, they may look at your performance. There's a scene in the movie where you, you, they look at your performance and they actually fire you because you're not buying the majority of their products. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. They use all this stuff they say they can't use, and they use it. So if you've ever seen the movie Gattaca, where they do this on genetics, they're actually based this on a lot of other things. And I've been basically putting this screenplay to get it together. This is a film noir type film, a lot like Chinatown or Mahon Drive or Lost Highway. And it is um, what you find in the movie with this solid green type, uh, you know, this premise is that the future is murder. And you, I want people to walk out of this film 
And I want them to walk out and think, I don't want the world to be like this. And I don't think Soylent Green really had it, because why? It wasn't possible. It really wasn't possible. Um, I don't think you had it and they live, because it was such a far out basis. Although it was very interesting, and they live had the longest movie fight of all time with a very good wrestler and a, a very professional man named Ronnie Ronnie Piper. And um, they had a lot of good things, but it just isn't possible. For once, I want one of these dystopian films to be possible. This could happen. And there's all sorts of signs that it is happening. Is it going to happen in my opinion? Yeah, probably not. But I want people to walk out of this with they could. The other um, show that I'm doing uh, is called The Darling Wendy Show. It is a show about a girl who came down from heaven and quickly found out that the world was not really that great. She came down as a 12-year-old resurrected being. And when she found out the world was terrible and terrible things happened, she didn't talk anymore. She never talked to anybody. She just talked to that <laughs> like that. It's a cartoon show. Well, one day, she finds a reason to talk. I'm not sure if I'm going to pitch this to Glenn Lee, Glenn Lee Chabowski. He's got too many people pitching stuff. They have adults with him and all that stuff. But I might make this a movie. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to pitch and do it a movie. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it at all. And then, of course, there's my third project that I've always had trouble with. It's a movie called The Last Day of Summer. I have about five or six projects I've always wanted to pitch. It's called Last Day of Summer. It's a film about a kid, high school kid, gets in a drag race. The other drag racer crashes his car right into a BMW. There's four passengers in the car, kills three of them. One of them is in critical condition and expected not to live. So what he does is he, uh, he skids out, he tries to help him out. He carries the one person on the car before it blows up. And instead of getting blamed for the crash, the people that show up start heralding him as a hero for saving the one person's life, potentially. And so then his family, that was on the outs with Hollywood, on the outs with everybody, on the outs, basically blacklisted, all of a sudden thrust into prominence. So this kid feels pressured to stick with the story. And so he does. And so the, the, the sister, that is cute, attractive, um, falls in love with him. The sister who died in the crash falls in love with him, only to be brokenhearted to death. In, of, of the movie, where all of a sudden, she's just in tears, she's walking down the street, and she sees an airport terminal. I know where there's an airport terminal. She walks in the airport terminal, everybody's waving by, she gets on the airplane, and she ends up in a movie theater, and the movie that's playing is her life. And her hand goes out the shoulder and says, Life is one big production. It is an excellent film, but I've never figured out how to tie it in. And to fix it, I mean, one person, my friend Mike from long ago, I mean, we got a little bit of the outs about it because I was working on another project called A Little Blue World uh, that I had also had mentioned before. It was a great story about a sociopath girl, excuse me, that, that, is, that is competing against the attention, competing for the attention of a... Um, a, a serial murder. I mean, this guy, girl was like Lindsay Lohan, and I actually wrote this before the whole Lohan thing got out of hand and everything, the whole, the whole Charlie Sheen thing got out of hand. It was a good film. It had a lot of holes. Uh, it wasn't really the kind of large film I like to do, but, you know, uh, who knows, you know? A lot of good ideas, but if you don't run with ideas, you never have it. Today, I was the same thing with this triad. I always had that idea. From the very first time I saw it, the first thing I, I thought is shotgun design. Especially after Anthony Bittug said, you know, the big thing right now, shotgun design. The first time I met the double A brothers, the, the Anthony and Andrew Bittug, he told me, the big thing right now is shotgun designs. And you know, I laughed on shotgun designs. I wanted to take three range masters, make them shoot 200 feet, and make them shoot all at once. Eh, you know. Um, Never did it. Um, I was thinking about taking one of those grenades working, eh, you know, never did it. Even called him once and said, hey man, I got this idea, and I want to take that pre-charged 90 PSI 
thing and put it under retaliate and I'll do it. Right after that, I get blue blazing sick, and you know he gets tied up doing some voiceover work, and we never get it done. And um, I have still a good idea. I still want to work with on it, and I have a pretty good idea on a pre-charged 90 psi seven act gun. Which, by the way, the seven act gun is actually original his idea. I'm just sort of helping him take off on it. And Anthony is someone who is, of course, associated with the Norwalk Regional Nerf League. And he's a damn good stampede player. He got me a couple times the last uh, game. He got me good, man. He got me good. I mean, I, I, I'm not really good at indoor battle. Hopefully this will raise the stakes. So, until next time, this is Chris Garcia, Cartier saying, Toodaloo! I might break this into two parts. Like, once the review is done, you know, um, I just go to this. So, anyway, read it. Read it. Look out. Look out. It's all about.